Morning everybody. We're going to go over these two saws here. This one is my personal saw that's had Bell Ray H1R run through it. This one is the Motul saw that I did a video on. We're going to go over these side by side, compare them. They both have a bunch of run time on them. I'm going to try and buzz through this as quick as I can. This is going to be a little bit longer of a video. But please watch the entire thing, pay attention, and try not to jump to conclusions. I know that's hard for some folks out there. Anyway, this is my personal saw. This has been on the channel all year long. This is the same saw that I was running when Dan Leeper was up here in late December of 22. This saw, I'm going to say that there's easily 900 hours of run time on here. Uh, let's just figure that I run six hours a day, five days a week. That's uh, 30 hours a week, 120 hours a month. So... You figure that up times 12, that adds up to be 1,440 hours. I'm going to say with skidding and missed days and whatnot, let's just subtract four months off of that. And so that's going to end up roughly around 960 hours. Let's just say it's 900 quite easily. So a lot of runtime. This saw... I would guarantee is somewhere in that same neighborhood of runtime. Um, fuel quality, I do not believe, is an issue between these two saws. I've had guys say that. Um, I've had a guy say that Moto Mix is the only thing you should be running. It's the be all end all. You'll never go through another saw again. Let's just talk about that for a minute. Moto Mix where I'm at is $32 a gallon. I run a minimum of five gallons of fuel a week. You figure that um, that's 20 gallons a month. That ends up being $640 a month to run Moto Mix. Um, it's six bucks a gallon for pump fuel, premium non-ethanol. That adds up to be 120 bucks a month. Say we're running $20 worth of mix oil. Uh, so that would put us at 140 So let's say, so we're easily $500 a month more to run Moto Mix. At that rate, I could blow up a saw every three months and still be money ahead than using Moto Mix. So I don't care who you are, if you're running a lot of fuel, it does not make sense to run Moto Mix. Um, that's just my opinion on it. Some guys want to attack my business model, whatever. All right, now that that all rambling is done, Let's hop in here, take a look at these, and we'll see that there is a difference in the way these saws look and fuel quality is not the issue here. Um, yeah, so I guess let's dive in here and get to looking. So let's start with this saw. This is the Bell Ray saw. We see some little bit of darkness down in the bottom end of this thing here. But it's nothing out of the ordinary for the amount of time that's on this. And the way, also let's talk about the builds here. This saw still has base gasket. Um, Factory piston, basically has some exhaust work, some intake work, lower transfer work. That's about it. 
This saw has exhaust work, lower transfer work, upper transfer work, pop-up piston, um, combustion, uh, squish band work, and so that's that. This is a quote-unquote crappy piston. This is a highway pop-up piston. You can see I've done some scratching on it with my thumb here. This carbon is real light. Comes off pretty easily. Um, we do see a little bit of coking around here, but this stuff is just real light. A little bit of stuff between the ring lands. Um, but <clears throat> we still see machine marks on a quote unquote shitty piston. And I think it looks pretty good for having 900 or so hours on it. As you can tell, the saw gets used a lot and I do not spit shine it every night. It spends a lot of nights in the woods. This one as well. <clears throat> okay, so let's hop over here. Look at the piston on this one. We see I've had to scratch the top of this with a screwdriver. It's kind of hard to tell, but I would say that that carbon is every bit of five thousandths thick, probably even thicker. We look, <clears throat> but the bottom end looks really clean, looks good. The piston looks good. You see your normal wear that X Torx have. Same thing on this one. Pretty normal wear on the intake side. Like I said, we've already looked at the exhaust side. It looks good. Exhaust side on this one looks pretty good. We still see some machine marks. We do have a little bit of coking on the exhaust side with the Motul. We'll look in the exhaust port here. And we see that that is just packed full of all kinds of nasty carbon, top and bottom. We'll look at Bell Ray. And we see a little bit on the bottom there. The top is almost perfectly clean. I wish I'd get these two things to set together right here. Uh, yeah, so... Top is pretty well clean. There's a little bit on the side. A little bit on the side. A little bit on the bottom. But nothing like the Motul. Let's look at them from the inside. Now we see I've got a little bit of a line here, right in here. That's nothing to worry about. I'm guessing I probably didn't chamfer very well on that particular spot, but it does not transfer over into the piston at all. looks good uh, <clears throat> we look in here and we can see that there is a significant amount of carbon build up wish this thing would focus okay so we see carbon build up on the roof there that's about a sixteenth of an inch that that's protruding down into the exhaust port, the top of the combustion chamber, pretty well carboned up. We see we've got a little light brown color there. That would indicate that tune is probably pretty close. Let's look in here at this one and get it to set. We see virtually no carbon on the top of that exhaust port we still see machine marks everything looks pretty good let's look oh, sorry about this camera work combustion chamber looks pretty good 
not too bad. Um, <clears throat> so we've looked at that. We can take a peek inside the cans. See, this one's nice and clean. No flaky carbon down in there. Everything looks pretty good. Let's look in here. And then we see we have a lot of nasty, flaky carbon. It's tough to get my light down in here right, but I think we can tell that that's definitely got some more carbon buildup in that can. So that covers pretty much everything there. Like I said, I've seen a lot worse from I've seen a lot worse from manufacturer oils with way less time on them. Um, Motul, I think if you're a guy doing a lot of repeated back-to-back -back cuts, getting your saw pretty warm and not doing a lot of idle time, Motul will probably do awesome for you. Um, as far as if you're a production timber faller, this is kind of the associated carbon that you can expect with both of these oils. Um, this is kind of more geared toward the production fallers, um, the guys who are not making a lot of back-to-back -back repeated cuts, guys who are seeing more idle time than what firewood guys see. Um, and this is just a comparison of apples to apples, side by side, real world, extended use look at two separate oils. You guys be the judge of what you want to run. I'm not telling anybody to run anything. Um, I've had good luck with Bell Ray, so it's what I like. I may do some more testing on some different oils. Um, I've done a bunch of testing with factory oils and none of them come close to what either one of these do as far as protection over a very extended use period. So I may or may not put a new piston in this. I have one right here. Um, with Bell Ray, I have never ran a saw to failure yet. So maybe we should stick the jug back on here, clean this up just a little bit, stick the jug back on and continue on with this piston and see how long we can get. Or should we throw a new piston in it and continue to run it? You guys leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Um, I hope this has been informative and helped somebody out there. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And especially if you've got something smart to say. I would love to hear what you got to say. Because the more you guys comment, the more the channel gets noticed. So, I think we've touched on about everything that I need to. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.